Welcome, welcome my fellow familiars. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. And if not, well, shit happens, so that's fine. Today we'll be looking... Whoa, level 9 upon... Anyway, sorry. Today we're looking at a white-red equipment deck. Holy crap, this is a nice hand. I will keep it. Okay, so let's see. I would like... Getting Thalys Lieutenant... I guess I'll get it out as soon as possible. So let's do uh, planes. Yeah, let's do planes here. Follow that up probably with the mountain. Get the lieutenant out. Then um, I'll get the inquisitor out. If we do draw into two white, it would be very nice for us to uh, play this. I mean, two white, yeah. We'll play all this watching. Otherwise, we'll see what we do. So our opponent's white also. Crap, we're drawing too much red here. That's no good. That's no good at all. Oh well, at least now we have enough mana for Avacinian missionaries. So, we'll go with that. The good thing here is, once I play the Inquisitor next turn, this becomes a 2-2. Two -two. So, that's pretty good. We'll be set there. Okay. Wow. This might be... No, not a vampire deck, really. Uh, curious to see what it might be. Uh, anyways... Westwell Abbey. So, let's play the mountain here. Let's play the Inquisitor. Afterwards, yeah, I think I'll get Avacinian Missionaries out first and then do Haunted Clock and attach it to Avacinian Missionaries if our opponent plays a creature. This way, it will allow me to lock down whatever creature he plays. So, that'll be pretty good. Excellent. Next turn, we'll be swinging for 5 damage. So, real. Let's see if our opponent will have a response of some source. He's level 19, so uh, I'm not thinking we will be winning this at all, but who knows? We might be lucky. It is always a possibility. Complete disregard. Well, yep. That was, yeah, that was expected. What What does it say? Power 3 or less. Okay. Harvest hand, eh? No. We gotta play Westwell Abbey with Avicinian Missionaries. Let's swing for 2 damage here. And then I'll do Haunted Clock and... Well, let's hope our opponent does play a creature. Because if he does, I can do Haunted Clock and touch it on Avicinian Missionaries and lock down that creature. Then we'll follow that up with the Harvest Hand, most likely. Unless if we draw into white mana, which means we'll do always watching. Okay, there is Pilgrim's Eye. Good, so... That's going to get locked down for sure. That's fine. Upon searching for the land that he needed. Hmm. This is a little bit interesting here. Okay. Sandstone Bridge. So, Sandstone Bridge on Avacinian Missionaries. We can swing for lots of damage right now, actually. You know what? I'm going to do this and attach it here and tap them down. So, let's equip. Let's go here. I know our opponent might have something much larger and scarier, but I'm going to do this. Wait. The beginning of your end step. Oh, oh, crap. Well, that was a waste. Okay, anyways, our opponent will be blocking this. Well, this kind of sucks. This gets transformed, but I won't be able to tap down anything. Choose a creature to exile. Nothing, really. Oh jeez. Sorry about this guys. Uh this is a fresh deck that I just made, so unfortunately I have not read the descriptions for everything fully yet, and uh that's why I'm suffering a little bit here. There's the Knight of White Orchard, that's fine. It'll be dead. <coughs> so our opponent will search for more lands. There we are. Will he play a creature? Holy crap. Yep, he will. So, Keithion's Irregulars. It's a 4-3. So, a response to our Lunar Inquisitors. Let's hope we draw into white mana. Ah, jeez. Oh, wait. We do have the white mana. Always watching then. Here we are. Cannot play Harvest Hand or Eorus Champion, really. Let's see. 4-4 uh, four, four and 5-5. Five, five. So, you know... What... I'm thinking of swinging here, I think, with this. So let's continue. 
Oh, we can swing with both of them. Oh, I forgot, they all get vigilant, so we're good here. Let's see what the opponent will do. Okay, there is that blocking. Oh wow, he will be taking 4 points of damage. Fine by me. Excellent. Just excellent. With Harvest Hand and Eora's Champion, we will be in a really, really good condition. So, oh, sorry about this. I completely keep on forgetting this every damn time. Okay, so Harvest Hand, once it transforms, plus one, plus one. And we'll have Menace, so not bad. Our opponent's at seven mana, meaning he can't play an Eldrazi, but I don't know if it's likely. Holy crap, we're beating level 19 opponent. I don't... Oh, crap. I, uh, I spoke too soon, guys. I'm sorry. Really, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. Well... Is he going to take down Avis... Yep, Lunar Inquisitors. They're dead now. Well, we got this 4-4. Swing at the opponent's face, he's dead pretty much, so... He does nothing. Good. Now, you're as champion, but what does this get me really? Harvest Hand seems to be a little bit better choice. But, oh, what's gonna happen? Ketones, what? Tap target creature, okay. Fine. Do I want to equip the Haunted Clock? It has... A creature will have haste, so... Hell yeah! Uh, yeah, that's fine tapping by me. We will be swinging at the opponent's face here, so let's continue and swing. It will be really good if our opponent does block. Let's see. Oh, this is excellent! I had no idea this equipment gives haste. Oh, this is wonderful. Really, really wonderful. So our opponent will be jump blocking. This will get transformed into an equipment. Therefore, this will get pumped up. Yes, 5-4. Excellent. Now, let's just equip here. Just so we don't have to do it. What's the equip cost here? Two. Good. So this means next turn we can play another Harvest Hand and equip this. Therefore, making this into a 6-5. Yeah, opponent's dead. It's dead, actually. Hmm. Okay, there is Soren. It comes with the six, and... Oh, no. He's going to do the damage here. Yep. Hey, that's fine, buddy. That's fine. Whatever floats your boat, so... Let's think this through very carefully now. I played this, that's 4 damage to opponent's face right away, right? He can actually use this to kill Yoris Champion next turn, so we gotta think this through carefully. Yoris Champion, yes. We have 3 mana, we need to do 6 damage. We have 6 damage already on the board. With equipping this here, doesn't matter. And let's just equip this also. Here we go, and that's a victory. Holy crap, we beat a level 19 opponent. And look at this creature, it has everything one could want. So, 8 damage to opponent's face, and he's dead. Excellent. Well guys, that's a very, very fortunate episode number 1. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in episode number 2. And we're back for game number 2. I actually didn't realize this, but in game number one, I said I'll see you in episode number two. Sorry about this, I meant game number two. And we're back. So, level 12 opponent. Nice. What is up with this? We're up against all these high rollers here. So, oh no, not enough lands. Two lands. We have Relic Seeker, which is pretty good. Okay, I will keep this hand just because of the Relic Seeker. So, our opponent's white. Okay, then. Curious to find out what happens here. Whoa, cliffed up a tree. So let's just start off with this right away. Going to planes with the relic seeker. Uh, Foundry of the consoles most likely play out harvest hand. Oh, okay then. Well, I will trade my relic seeker for this. So we're 
do I want to do this? Yeah, I think I do. Or do I want to keep this and trade my harvest hand? Hmm. Choices, choices. Well, anyways, we can play all of these creatures out, so... That's good so far. One place the planes and any creature. Okay, Pious Evangel. Now that's troublesome. Our opponent can choose just to sacrifice Pious Evangel here and we won't be able to do much really. Does he swing? I will be swinging, so... Okay, he's... Excellent. I am going to trade in this case just because... Uh, if this gets to 4, it's going to be dangerous, so... Let's do this. That's fine. Yeah, Hanvey militia captain, not worth it, especially not once he becomes a cult leader. Well, this kind of sucks. Let's do harvest hand. Okay, so far so good. Kazul toll collector, eh? Okay. Okay, so next, I'll play Kazul toll collector just because his equip cost is zero making our things for us a little bit better and we might be up here against the aura deck could it be we'll see okay next turn i'm definitely swinging this harvest hand here so there is that hope against hope oh geez okay so this deck might be all about just going as wide as possible not good not good do i want to do looming spires on this and swing Hmm, why the hell not? So, Blooming Spires gets first strike there. Now, uh, not going to play Toll Collector just yet. We will, however, swing, see what the opponent chooses to do. And then I'll play Militant Inquisitor. The reason for playing Militant Inquisitor here... Okay, our opponent will be attaching that enhancement on Pious of Angel, I just know that much. But once that happens, yeah, that's good. Next turn I can play Abyssinian Missionaries. Hope that I can get my Harvest Hand killed, attach the equipment to the Abyssinian Missionaries, thus ensuring that I can uh, exile whatever has Hope against Hope. Okay, Hope against Hope, just as expected. Our opponent will be swinging with whatever it is he throws, so, yep. That's going to become a 4-4, four, four. hmm, with the first strike. Well then, what? He's level 12, come on, the dude should know what he's doing by this point. Um, well then, I don't mind. Next turn we can do white veteran sidearm instantly pretty much. So, uh, I am going to get my harvest hand killed. That will be wonderful if he takes the bait. Excellent, he does. So let's get it killed. Good, good, good. Excellent. That's a 3 3 now. With veteran sidearm, this will be a 4 3. And this will be a 5 5. Not bad. Hmm. And then if I touch this, it will have menace. Actually, I will uh, touch the scythe. The reason for this, it's a human and still a human, right? So once I touch scythe, it will have menace. And, well, he can still double block there, but... Ah, uh, jeez. What you do? What you do? Okay, he swings. I think a better idea would have been to keep our creature back. Oh, well, let's take 5 points of damage. So be it. Good. Definitely going to touch this now, because he decided to swing. Okay. Nice. So first, equip here. Uh, doesn't really matter. Veteran sidearm. What? Come on. He won't have Gideon's reproach in there, right? Reprisal. Oh no. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'll play Abyssinian missionaries next. So it's okay. For damage to opponent's face, will he chump block? He does not, because he needs it for hop against hop. Okay then, so next turn we'll be taking 7 points of damage. It is fine. And then I'll play Abyssinian Missionaries. Unfortunately we're one 
if we draw into one land, it will be wonderful. But chances are we might not. So let's see. Another Pious Evangel. Oh, come on. There is the life gain going on. This is a good deck. Okay. Well then, while the game is going slowly, I just wanted to tell you guys. Uh, I'm extremely thankful to all the viewers that are watching these videos. Especially as of late, I'm noticing channel is slowly growing and becoming better. So thank you for that and thank you for all the support you've shown. Also, I was thinking of putting an uh, intro to this channel, so to every single video. So if you guys think it's a good idea, please let me know. I would really appreciate your opinion if you would tell me. Now, we've got this. I'm not going to swing. Or do I want to? I actually do want to swing. Oh no, I shouldn't have done that. I should not have done that. Well, we're dead. Yeah, anyways guys, that's game number two. Yep. Okay. Uh, there is no return from this, unfortunately. No matter how much I try, I don't think there is a return. There is 6-6 six, six will be swinging at us. And another Pious Evangel. Yeah, we have lost this. Well, that's game number two. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you guys in game number three. And we're back for game number three. Game number two, honestly, I screwed up. That's my mistake, so hopefully we'll do better. And if I had to guess, I think we're up against the uh, Signy Gates. Okay, we're up against an aggro deck there for sure, so let's see. Bunch of lands, weapons trainer. Oh, this is good. Let's keep this. Okay, so planes. Uh, yeah, I gotta do planes. Hoping that I will draw into something. Uh, really hoping that I draw into like a uh, red mana or something, but we'll see. We will see. Our opponent plays Goblin Glory Chaser. Now I kind of regret not playing Blooming Spires first. Because this thing is going to get menace. Let's see. We drew into Blooming Spires. Crap. Well, let's just play it. Give it to this. Next turn, I will play uh, Weapons Trainer. Or... Hmm... That's a 3-2. That's a 2-3. Yeah, I think I'll get out Weapons Trainer. So there's another Goblin Glory Chaser. This one gets renowned for sure. It is okay. We will persevere. Slowly but surely. So, uh, actually, let me think about this very carefully. I'll play Militant Inquisitor here. Okay, Veteran Sidearm. So I'll play Planes with Militant Inquisitor. Here's my thinking. So next turn, I'm going to play Sunstone Bridge, pump this up, swing, and on top of it, I'll be able to play Weapons Trainer. And that's it. Yeah, that's it. Unless if I draw into Basic Land. Then if I draw into Basic Land, I'll play that Basic Land with Weapons Trainer and Veteran Sidearm. There is Chandra Nalar. And opponent swings with this too. Oh, what? 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 Hmm, quite confusing, but okay. Not gonna complain. That's a quite fortunate thing that has happened to us. So let's do this. The reason for me doing this is I did not want to do Sunstone Bridge just because it was a little bit too risky. Now, um, hmm, three mana, right? Weapons Trainer, not good just yet. Chitinous Cloak, however. Makes this into a 4-4. So yeah, that's what is gonna ha happen. Chitness Cloak, 4-4. Four, four. We will swing. I don't care if our opponent decides to make this right now, that's fine. We'll take care of it eventually. Let's see, opponent takes the damage. Nice, 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 nice. So with Weapon Strainer coming out next turn, it's going to be a 4-3, yep. That'll be good. Oh boy, let's see. Hmm, well, Chitna's Cloak. The equip cost for it is so large, it's ridiculous. So, we take one point of damage. Planes, Goblin, Arsonist, this gets untapped. Another one point of damage goes through. Okay. 
That's fine. If he gets Chandra out, I'm just attaching Chitna's Cloak and swinging straight to the opponent's face. Without the care in the world, really. Infectious Bloodlust gets attached. Okay, that is fine. That is just fine and dancy. So, Chandra Nalar comes out for sure. And guess what? Chandra Nalar die, dies very, very quickly. Um, unless if he uses the special, two damage to target. Yeah, that's fine. So, upon will have to swing with this. I don't know if he will swing with this or not, but we'll see. Oh boy. Well, it's okay, it's okay. We're only at 16 life right now. So, two damage to target player. We get two damage done, dealt to us. What? Come on, yeah. Okay. Good. Good. This is excellent. Then it means I can just attach Chitna's Cloak instantly and go on swinging. To make things even more fun, I'll attach a Sandstone Bridge to this. So, Okay, so Sandstone Bridge, here we go. It pains me to do this, but I will have to equip this here. It does not matter the mana tapping really at this point. It has menace, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Chandra gets obliterated at this point. Okay, bye Chandra. Now, 6 damage, holy crap. We're in big trouble actually. So we will be taking 6 damage dropping down to 3. Oh no. Once I play Weapons Trainer, we can only block one of these. Only this guy. <sighs> that's, that's going to hurt. Act of Treason. Yeah, we lost this. Okay, guys. Well then, that's game number three. I'm sorry that game number two and game number three weren't as good. But either way, I'm really thankful to you guys for watching. I hope I'll be making better episodes for you. And I'll see you in other episodes. Bye.